So, um, well, uh, welcome. And uh, uh, so, I'm Lajo Seymour. I'm uh, uh, the author of GHS. Um, and uh, let's see, uh, the talk of my, or the title of my talk is not something GHS, but I prefer to submit the final title to me, <laughs> making sense of all uh, uh, the JS. Um, and um, it's it has a different structure or a different uh, starting point than uh, most uh, of the talks I've given so far. Uh, most of the time I've explained how to use the HCDS um, and, um, for example, uh, how to use the, the packages that come with it, how to install the compiler, um, and uh, how to use the uh, uh, function interface to uh, interact with uh, JavaScript. And once you run the compiler, uh, you get some output files, uh, and usually I tell people that they work uh, the local browser and uh, uh, all is great. Um, but this time I'm going to assume that you already did all that work and you're left wondering what you got. You got something that worked, but uh, that leaves it a bit as a black box, uh, and there's a bit more that you can do with it, and I can use it to you. Uh, Speak up more of the microphone closer. Ah, I can hear uh, it's, it's, yeah. Okay, thanks. Um, so today's topic is uh, basically all the JS, uh, which is one of the JavaScript files that you uh, get if you run the browser, uh, if you run the compiler on a SQL program. Um, and uh, I'd like to explain what's in there um, and why I made certain choices, why certain suggestions that are I hear often don't really work, um, uh, but uh, there are other things that do or uh, are on the way. Um, so I hope it will become a bit more clear what's what kind of mess uh, or how to make sense out of this uh, mess of uh, uh, JavaScript code. So for those who haven't used GCDS, uh, short introduction, all the JS is really a self-contained JavaScript program that uh, is uh, everything to run your uh, compiled SQL program. Um, you can load it in a, on a web page, uh, or if you started with Node.js um, in the terminal, then uh, if you compile your world, which is obvious, uh, uh, single line Haskell program that just prints Hello World, um, you get the same output as from, from uh, JTC. Uh, you, you just run it through Node rather than uh, get, uh, using it executable. Uh, so really, this is everything in there. There's no no um, um, additional source uh, code uh, or uh, JavaScript sources needed uh, for this. So it's, it's self-contained. Um, but if you are, if you run the compiler, uh, you don't just get an old JS. Uh, you get a, a template, uh, empty HTML uh, files, well index.html, and that includes a few separate files that. To, together, combined, concatenate, combined, really is just uh, um, all that uh, is in all the JS. Excuse me, what is the EXE here? Is that, is this, is this Windows? GSE EXE, is this a Windows platform or is this just? No, it's just an, um, some extension to make sure that the output name doesn't clash with any other names. So if, if the directory name was without any extension, uh, then uh, you wouldn't be able to generate a normal Linux or other non Windows file with it uh, if you compile your same Haskell file with GNC. Uh, so, yeah, that's it's really just a reason to get something unique and have to be a directory since uh, uh, that's more convenient for uh, web things where you have multiple JavaScript files and a few more other files that uh, I'll come to in a, a second. So today's talk is about what's in OJS uh, or the other files that you find in your JS Hexa um, and uh, where they come from. Uh, the, um, and I'll discuss some, some ways of uh, getting more information uh, uh, of uh, um, the, the files that JS produces uh, and the different sources that the um, um, compiler gets its JavaScript uh, source codes that, that end up in your final results. Uh, from. Um, and uh, I'll also go into a bit of debugging and tuning since there are some ways that are not completely obvious to uh, um, 
to manipulate the outputs. Uh, and that's the first part of the talk. Um, I hope that when I've explained the basics, that uh, um, it will become a bit more clear what the, the current possibilities and limitations are for uh, um, compiling Haskell and uh, also uh, dealing with uh, non-Haskell dependencies or dealing with deployment of uh, Haskell programs. Uh, so after that, I hope there will be a bit of time left to, to discuss uh, or to uh, well, uh, the various uh, options there. So let's start. Um, and okay, yeah, that's the discussion. So uh, things like deployment things or uh, distributing Haskell libraries rather than just uh, uh, self-contained programs as a single uh, 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 large blob, and also dealing with JavaScript dependencies that can be quite complex these days. Since there are JavaScript uh, package management systems which uh, yeah, can often uh, well they're similar to Cabal, but less uh, predictable. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, anyway, um, so let's start with uh, all.js. So all.js really is just uh, uh, a few files combined that you also find in the JSX uh, directory after compiling the program. Uh, run main.js, um, rts.js, rts, and dependent1.js. Dependent1.js uh, is really a single category, but uh, due to the initialization not order, there's that's one of them is loaded before RTS.js and the other one after. But other than that, uh, for their uh, purpose, they're, they're uh, more or less the same. Uh, so, to start with, the easiest one uh, and the shortest one is in the line. Um, that's uh, run main JS. It really just calls uh, the Haskell or the JHCDS Haskell runtime system, the H dollar main function, with the name of the main action of the program, uh, and that's, that's really what it starts. Uh, the main function uh, initializes the runtime um, and starts the thread for the um, uh, for the action that that just uh, started. Um, but this serves as a an easy example for at least some naming conventions. All the names that JCDS itself uses generates uh, start with $8. Um, it's just um, a convention to prevent too much pollution of uh, other namespaces. There's no more advanced um, naming or uh, um, module uh, system things in use uh, yet. I'll come to that uh, later. Um, the H dollar main function is uh, something implemented directly uh, in uh, JavaScript, um, and uh, the H dollar main uh, capital Z C etc. Main is really a Z encoded name of the uh, package name. Uh, main then uh, uh, capital Z capital C is the Z encoding for a colon, and Z I is uh, a dot. Um, so that's the package name plus module name. So for all exported uh, uh, function names uh, or uh, for modules to get a Z encoded name in your uh, JavaScript outputs and everything is prefixed with uh, H$. If you have uh, foreign imports that use the uh, C calling conventions or C call, uh, then um, uh, JHCDS also prefixes H$ uh, for these. And there's a calling convention that allows you to pass in uh, all the C uh, data types, including pointers, uh, uh, so if you have a package that uses that, uh, then uh, it's possible to re-implement the uh, C uh, external, uh, the foreign C code in, in JavaScript, and you also get it prefixed. Um, so that's the main. Uh, then there's rts.js. That's the, the uh, file that uh, stays mostly the same. Um, it's generated by the uh, gen2.rts and gen2.rts apply uh, uh, modules of GHCDS. Um, and it's really um, lots of support functions for the, the runtime system. Um, uh, things like uh, apply this function to uh, three arguments uh, with total size four uh, or uh, create a partial application uh, of a certain size. Um, and these comments are uh, several variants. Um, and uh, there's just some Haskell code to, to generate this. Um, and there are many optimized code paths for uh, specific sizes. And after something gets, uh, after, 
I think they go to four or six or something. Uh, after that, they all get tunneled through uh, a single generic uh, uh, function that's a bit slower. So there is a possible trade-off uh, between how many specialized code paths you generate here, uh, um, and um, which are faster, but they do increase the size of this file bit. But unfortunately, since it requires a complete rebuild of all libraries, including the libraries that we built with GHGS boot, uh, it's um, currently not yet possible to uh, change it since it's yeah, just too inconvenient. Uh, Perhaps it will change in the future, but uh, overall you can assume that RTS.js really won't change uh, for a single GHCDS installation. Um, a global function is here an application, uh, I think, of two arguments of total size one. Uh, there are often, especially for I.O., uh, arguments that are uh, size zero, it's the, the real world, uh, uh, or the, the state has real world, which really is size zero thing that you don't really Really pass, but uh, an IO action running that twice is still different than uh, a tank, uh, something that uh, is not really a function. So uh, there's, and there's also arguments that are bigger than one JavaScript variable, like 64 bit ints don't fit in a single JavaScript variable, uh, such as yes uses two. So here uh, the application patterns are slightly more complicated than uh, JHCs, uh, but not. Uh, um, Completely different uh, and it's really repetitive. So, uh, lots of these, uh, everything auto generated and uh, all the same. Um, so, um, the next step is slightly more interesting. Lib.js and Lib1.js is basically all non Haskell code, all code that's not compiled from Haskell. And this includes both the Haskell code that is included by, by packages and the uh, code that's um, um, inserted by GHCDS itself, uh, which includes the, the runtime system, the scheduler, the implementation of STM and VARs and that kind of things. Um, so the, these sources, they come from uh, two uh, uh, main sources. One of them is uh, for Cabal packages. Uh, if you have uh, a JS sources field in your package uh, and you point to a source code file, this file is included in, your, in the, the generated binaries or the, the library file for that package. And every time that package shows up in dependencies, get CDS adds all the JavaScript sources to the JS. Um, and uh, JCDS uh, has its own JavaScript sources for the runtime system and also a few additional sources that are not uh, included by packages directly, but uh, sort of substreamed in, um, in the shift repository uh, on GitHub. Uh, this is more or less a transitional thing, but uh, if you want to find out where some JS source or where something from JS or one JS comes from, and these are the main uh, uh, sources to look for. And the other uh, thing is if you invoke JHCDS manually, if you have JS files on your command line, it will just uh, include them in these lib and lib one JS uh, uh, files. Um, and JHCDS invokes the C preprocessor for um, uh, before uh, building these, these files. Um, and I'll come to some use case examples for, for that uh, later. So what the linker does is uh, for all dependencies, uh, the Cabal uh, install JS underscore A package archive file, which is more or less the uh, equivalent with its own internal format, not the, uh, the normal .a file uh, for statically linked uh, libraries. Uh, doesn't command line like everything that ends in .js is assumed to be a JavaScript file. Um, and um, the shims repository is something that's pulled into uh, uh, GHCDS's library directory uh, when installing the, the, the libraries for GHCDS using GHCDS boot. Uh, um, and that contains a bunch of YAML files which describe which sources to include for uh, uh, package dependencies. And uh, most of the sources uh, in there are for the GHCDS runtime system, which is our dependencies of, I think, RTS, um, I don't quite remember something that's always named at least, um, and a few packages like text uh, that don't include JavaScript versions of a few simple uh, uh, foreign functions uh, include some, some extra code here as well to, to make them fully work uh, without yet 
uh, uh, sending patches upstream to, to include the JavaScript files directly in the package and uh, using JS yes sources. But at least the second use case with the, all these third party packages, uh, I think it's really transitional and uh, eventually all the JavaScript sources should be moved to the package so it will be maintained with the, uh, the package itself. Um, there used to be um, for lib.js, uh, lib.js.files output, which contains all the um, source or the, 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 the locations of the, the files that are included in, in lib.js. So you could use this uh, to re, uh, rebuild the, the, the lib.js easily. Um, and for example, if you had some sources that you want to load from a different source, like a CDN or something. Uh, you would be able to leave them out, but unfortunately, due, due to some uh, upgrades, uh, I had to uh, remove this temporarily. I'll bring this uh, uh, back uh, later. So that's the non Haskell code. Auto.js is the, the Haskell uh, compiled Haskell code. That's the file that really uh, has everything. So if you have a team of people working on your uh, uh, but application and you add more and more dependencies and more codes, then this is the file that keeps growing. Um, all the names again are top level, um, um, global scope. Uh, they start with each dollar. Uh, if they are uh, exported names, then they have a fully Z encoded name uh, that starts with each dollar. Um, and if they have internal names, then they start with each and then more than one dollar. And these names are really. Um, uh, not very informative. Um, they um, are usually allocated by the linker uh, at, uh, at link time uh, to, to um, make them somewhat short. And uh, besides the code itself, uh, there's also metadata. I'll explain in a moment uh, what that is. But at the end of the out.js, you find a very long screen that uh, uh, contains all the metadata for all the, the top level Haskell data, basically. So what the linker does is it starts at your main action um, and it um, reads the um, dependency data for for that uh, all the JavaScript or all the uh, object files uh, that uh, GHCS produces contain uh, code and uh, dependencies for the code and dependencies are uh, tracked um, per function more or less. But if you have um, multiple mutually recursive or mutually uh, uh, dependent uh, functions, they're really grouped into the same uh, uh, block since there's no way that you can pick one and not the others. Uh, so, but that's really an optimization um, uh, just to, to improve linking performance. In performance. Uh, so you can assume that if you start at main, that everything that you somehow call directly, indirectly uh, is included. But that means that everything that you can't reach from main uh, even if you depend on the package, it's not included in your RGS. So this is similar to split objects linking uh, with GHC and it's uh, always uh, not for GHCS. Uh, the output would be a lot bigger if it didn't. So um, if you want to find out what's in there um, and how much of your code comes from a certain uh, location, there's out.js.stats and has a breakdown of the code size per module or package. Um, and also uh, metadata size. So uh, metadata is really something that's, that comes from all the, the code combined. Uh, uh, so uh, the code type itself is a uh, um, slight uh, under approximation of what you can actually get from each package. Um, so that's often, uh, if you have very big modules, you have lots of specialization or uh, um, uh, unfolding, uh, then uh, this is a good way to see if you can change uh, inlining flags or uh, uh, JHCTS options for modules to, to affect uh, optimization. Um, and uh, yeah. So, um, but the metadata is something that's maybe a bit mysterious. So, uh, uh, but to explain that, I first have to explain what uh, tanks um, and Haskell code look like while after compiled to JavaScript. Uh, I'm not really going to into the uh, uh, operational details, but just uh, uh, explain what's in the code, how it's actually run. That uh, uh, is not uh, in the scope of this talk today. Um, 
all names start with um, each dollar uh, and the plain names that don't have an underscore um, and then some letters um, um, suffix, uh, those are top level data. And top level data is uh, either a function, uh, which in Haskell is uh, a lifted thing that can be bottom. Um, and um, those things are represented by JavaScript objects. All those JavaScript objects, uh, they have some uh, Properties, but for the, the uh, top level functions like main, main is an IO action, which means that it's a function from state real world to, to all of your units and in the state real world, more or less, uh, where the state real world is really not passed explicitly. But it's, it has to be treated as a function. Like if you run twice, then it really has to do the same thing twice. Uh, it's not the same as you go away from the twice. Um, this um, uh, top level data is an object with an F property. Uh, the F property for functions, if you call it, it applies to function. Uh, for thunks, uh, the F um, entry function is something that returns the uh, value of the thunk in the cat normal form. So while running the STG, uh, basically calling uh, into your data is something that, that, that you do all the time and uh, for this data, every, every data, uh, every bank, every uh, has called heap value, listed value, has uh, an associated function. Uh, those functions themselves, those are uh, implemented in JavaScript as JavaScript functions. They typically end with uh, uh, underscore e for most normal um, um, entry functions or underscore column, uh, column underscore e for the special ones that are for data constructors that don't do anything else. Uh, for data constructors, you often have uh, a normal entry function as well. Uh, if you have uh, things like strict fields where they have to be evaluated before the actual data is, uh, uh, constructor is returned. Um, but um, those work more or less the same. If you do pattern matching on, uh, for example, maybe value, uh, the, the bottom, the, the um, each lower base, uh, etc., is the Z encoded name of the just, the, the just constructor, GHC dot base dot just uh, is the, the full name of the, uh, the real Haskell uh, name. And the underscore con is just a, a name that GHCDS adds to identify uh, the, the type of uh, thing it's working on. Um, if uh, a maybe value is passed to something, uh, the runtime system um, um, will often pattern match on uh, the constructor, so check whether it's just or nothing. And for this, it inspects, or uh, JC inspects the tag, the constructor tag, which is one for uh, uh, nothing and two for just. Uh, the constructor tag um, in uh, uh, GHCDS is stored as a property of functions. JavaScript functions are objects. And um, before any Haskell code uh, is run, all the uh, appropriate uh, uh, metadata uh, properties of all these entry functions have to be set. So based uh, uh, the, the, the bottom one base that I just underscore con underscore e, as a property A, which is contains the constructor tag, which is set to two, and then the runtime system knows that this is the second constructor of this thing. Um, and but that's um, these things are immutable uh, after initialization. But uh, in JavaScript, there's no uh, uh, global static data in this this way. So this this is something uh, initialization of all these these things uh, happens uh, before the main action can start. Um, and the other thing that happens is uh, building the uh, top level data, the, the calves, the top level functions. And in this case, the top one is uh, um, an object that's assigned to the uh, main dot main variable uh, with these with, with a few fields, including uh, at least the f field, which is the entry function, then it's usable as a Haskell heap value. Uh, all these things have to be initialized before the program starts. And uh, if you look in the code, it doesn't look exactly like this, uh, since uh, there can be circular dependencies. Uh, and um, well, uh, it's, uh, so there's an indirect initialization here. Uh, and this, uh, what data to uh, put in every top level uh, uh, 
value constructor and what uh, metadata to put in uh, all the properties for all the entry functions. That's uh, what happens at the uh, initialization step. So when an application starts, the browser downloads the code, it parses the code, it generates the initial code, like white code or uh, older version of V8, compiled to an optimized uh, machine code before any of the JavaScript could be run. Um, then uh, the run main file calls install main, passing the main action. That thing sees that most of the Haskell runtime hasn't been initialized yet. It decodes the very large metadata stream, uh, it builds all the top level objects, then starts the um, Haskell uh, uh, lightweight thread uh, and that runs the, the rest of the main action. Typically, uh, parsing and code generation is uh, accounts for approximately two thirds or uh, 75% of startup time and uh, metadata initialization for the remaining 25%. Uh, so neither is uh, really uh, uh, free, unfortunately. Uh, so that, that's more or less everything that's in the program and everything that happens. Uh, so now if you run main starts the program, if you leave it out, then uh, you can call something else at least if you know the name, but uh, uh, the, uh, if you don't use name as the starting point, then uh, the problem comes how do you make sure that it's included in your program since the linker starts really at name and trace dependencies of that. So there, uh, um, uh, the options are it's a bit more uh, complicated than uh, uh, it's. Uh, May sound, uh, I'm going to uh, add more features there in the future. RTS.js is generated code. If you look in the uh, uh, GCDS itself, uh, gen2.rts, gen2.rts apply are the Haskell modules that really produce this file. It never uh, changes. Auto.js is the compiled Haskell. Lib.js is all the non Haskell. So if you have your old OGS and you see some names in there, uh, H dollar main some Z encoded name, uh, then it's clear it must be an auto GS, it's compiled Haskell code. Um, if it's H dollar, it's compiled Haskell code, but a non exported name, an internal name. Um, many uh, things in lib.js from the uh, GHCDS um, runtime system also start with uh, H dollar. They're um, implemented by hand in JavaScript. H dollar take M far, I think. I'm not really sure if that's the actual name. Uh, that, that will be some RTS function um, implementing uh, uh, that thing. Uh, big integer.0 is from the bundle JSBN big number library uh, that's not used anymore in the latest version, so you won't find that anymore. Um, uh, but some other non uh, uh, JHDS libraries uh, can still be found in there. And uh, uh, h dollar underscore hs text mem copy uh, that has a name that's not set encoded. Um, the reason here is that uh, this is a C call, a C foreign function interface import from the text package. Uh, GHDS prefixes those with H dollar, um, and so those end up in text uh, in lib.js. In this case, it comes from the shim repository, and because the shim repository has a text.yaml file which uh, says that the text uh, uh, package needs a uh, uh, JavaScript file containing this, this function. And the really repetitive short names uh, like app and yeah, really partial application uh, are from, from RTS.js. Uh, uh, so if something goes wrong, you should have some idea of what uh, the, uh, the purpose of, of a certain name uh, uh, is. So. so all these things, all the Haskell uh, uh, code things come from uh, uh, Object and archive files. Uh, JSO, JSO is always just the JavaScript or the JSON equivalent of uh, uh, native object files. They are uh, built by uh, just using a binary um, serializer. Uh, so it's, it's on internal formats. It's not really uh, usable by uh, external things, but they contain serialized JavaScript AST um, and some serialized data structures for the dependencies. Uh, they're not directly readable, but yes, yes has a few uh, command line flags, print apps, print uh, objects to um, dump the data in there. So if something uh, seems fishy or, or you want to just uh, figure out what's in there, 
uh, then uh, inspecting the object files uh, can be done with these uh, uh, commands. And um, if you compile a module with the dash debug flag on, uh, when you have to make sure that it actually recompiles, uh, then um, GHDF records uh, additional data inside the JS or files. At the moment, it's, I think, only the optimized uh, STG that was used to produce the uh, JavaScript. So there you can, after the fact, get, get uh, STG back. That's mostly something I've been using for my uh, uh, own debugging purposes. But sometimes doing that, uh, passing the dash debug flag gives you some, some more information. Archive files are uh, what Cabal will build for each package. Um, and it's just a collection of object files plus all the JS sources that you specified in your Cabal file. Um, and uh, by itself, it's not, not very interesting. Uh, but uh, if you use the program in uh, the util stuff directory of the JSCDS repo, uh, you can extract all the components out of an archive file to see what's, what's in there. Anyway. Resulting JS otherwise, you can inspect them with the print uh, abstract object uh, options of the GCDS itself. And if you build profiling, which is supported by GCDS, uh, but getting reports out of it, uh, like actual uh, breakdowns of uh, heat memory use, it's, that's a bit more complicated. Um, but um, all the um, um, Infrastructure is, is there basically. So then you just get, uh, just like you uh, get for native GC code and the underscore O for profiling objects, uh, JS being O for JavaScript profiling object and same for archives. So that's the files you get. Um, and um, well, once you have the outputs, uh, there are the GCDS has some uh, options to change things. Uh, one of them is changing the rename of the internal names. Normally the linker will. Uh, just uh, start with the sequence uh, uh, with all kinds of uh, letters and numbers usable for JavaScript variable names. And just pick the next uh, uh, item from the sequence when it needs another internal name and there's no information of where they come from at all uh, remaining in the, in the source. If you link with dash debug, then it doesn't do this. Uh, it keeps the original uh, uh, internal names, uh, which often contain a module name and some global uh, or some unique ID. Um, and uh, that gives you much better JavaScript code if you have some weird problem where you have no idea what's going on. Sometimes reading with debug, dash debug uh, can uh, give you enough information to uh, at least figure out the source of the um, uh, issue. The other thing that debug, dash debug does, uh, which didn't be the most solid, um, is uh, it changes how metadata is encoded. Uh, normally, all the metadata is in a very low string and it's uh, initialized before uh, uh, running the uh, anything um, with the HTML run or HTML main uh, has full uh, RTS functions. But uh, if you use debug, then all the uh, metadata for each separate uh, Top level data uh, uh, value or top level uh, entry function is uh, initialized separately with a separate call, which they, these get appended at the end of your file. So your file gets a lot bigger, but uh, you get uh, a bit more information of what's going on. Uh, normally, which should really always do, uh, give you the same result as um, uh, without the debug. If there's something wrong, then there may be a bug. Did you mean to uh, use the same flag twice? It, oh, I mean, that's, down below it looks yes. like you might not have. Yes, I'll come to that in a, a second, but that's indeed a uh, bug. <laughs> So um, the second thing is that uh, I mentioned before that the JavaScript code that's included in lib.js, JS runs up to the C preprocessor, and there are, are um, uh, many CPP macros in the JCDS runtime code. Uh, if you go to the Shimp repository um, and, for example, source thread.js uh, has the main loop, uh, the shell error, um, and it has some uh, uh, conditional uh, codes uh, based on the JCDS trace calls, the JCDS trace text. So, the second option here in my um, uh, example, JCDS uh, invocation should be JCDS uh, trace stack. And I think there's even more that I need to on my slides. Uh, if you do this, then you probably crash your browser uh, since it will um, uh, print uh, 
the top of the Haskell lightweight thread stack uh, to the uh, browser console and also the, all the arguments of the, the next call. And that's in each step of the uh, STG um, uh, machine, um, which is often um, more than once for actual function application in Haskell. Uh, so that gives you an enormous amount of output, uh, and there's another flag that didn't fit on my slide that redirects the output to a JavaScript array, uh, and then you use the JavaScript debugger to inspect what's in there, uh, which makes it yeah, sort of usable. At least you don't crash your browser, which is useful when you need to debug your code. Um, so I mean, there are many more there, and you can find them just by grabbing uh, for uh, all these kind of things. They're a bit under-documented, I think, uh, but uh, I think uh, at least you know where to find, find them now. Uh, so that's how to uh, influence the output with GCDS itself. Often uh, for deployment, people do uh, uh, something like notification to reduce the output size. GCDS doesn't, in current version, uh, attempt to uh, make a minimal Haskell uh, or a minimal JavaScript output, uh, and there are good tools uh, for that. Uh, but uh, Closure Compiler, uh, with the pass optimization that does global renaming of everything, uh, uh, it uh, needs uh, a bit of information on what it can't rename. There are certain things in the uh, Haskell runtime that GCDS uses that uh, uh, Closure Compiler doesn't expect. But if you pass it out of the external file that's in the same JS access directory, uh, then uh, we prevent Closure Compiler from doing these renames that will break your Haskell program. If there's still something that breaks uh, in um, the uh, minified results with uh, advanced optimizations, then it's either a bug in JCDS and it should report it, or it's something in the lib.js, uh, one of the external JavaScript libraries that uh, the program depends on that, that's not minified uh, correctly. So, the uh, compiler in this mode does make some assumptions about the code. So, not everything works, unfortunately. So, uh, that's, I think. Basically, what I wanted to say, that's the basics of how the linker works. The linker is uh, 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 split objects linker, so you really get everything that's reachable from main. Um, but all the output has mainly is really still a bit of a black box, but we can do some things with it, and I can work on some improvements recently. Um, but first, let me go into a few uh, uh, design decisions of why things are what they are now, or what we can't really do, or what I don't really like to do. Um, sometimes I heard the suggestion of why don't we use something really modular, like uh, uh, make a JavaScript variable for each Haskell module, maybe uh, each Haskell package or package tree first, and just do uh, x dot y dot z or something. That, that seems a bit more hierarchical and, um, and a bit nicer. But unfortunately, it's also it adds some directions, it adds stones. So uh, maybe as an optional thing for people who like nice code. Uh, but uh, overall, uh, uh, the trade off for switching to, uh, to that uh, uh, exclusively is too costly. Global names are fairly cheap in, in JavaScript. Uh, the, the JIT compiler will uh, uh, remember a global uh, address for those. It, it can uh, look them up quite. Quickly, uh, and all these indirections uh, and JavaScript objects, uh, uh, if the compiler can't figure out that these things are always going to do the same thing, then uh, this hurts performance dramatically. Uh, and we don't really clash with other names, so uh, uh, with uh, uh, the XR prefix. So, there, uh, I think this is a good starting point, um, but um, I do think we should add more uh, options later just uh, to make the deployment more flexible. Um, but overall, I think performance is uh, more uh, important here than um, uh, making it look nice as, as a code thing. The GTC does so many transformations, and SDG after the uh, CPS transformation, what it stacks, all the calls are, they do no, look nothing like your original Haskell code. Anyway, so it's investing too much time or sacrificing too much for slightly more readable names um, is not the ideal trade off, I think. Um, but I do think that uh, we can have a better story for exported or uh, uh, functions uh, that are not named, for example. Um, at the moment, we don't have a way to 
uh, include anything or make anything callable from uh, uh, JavaScript directly uh, since the linker doesn't know how to uh, include this and for an export, uh, for she doesn't work yet. So this is something that's still uh, uh, yeah, uh, only to be used. And other things are why does everything have to be in one single Auto.js uh, file since Auto.js really dominates the size of all the JS usually. Uh, why not one per package or one per module or have some JavaScript module uh, loading system and make it even more fine grained? The thing is, if you do it per package, it's very far from optimal. Uh, usually, a very large fraction of the code can be dropped by doing split object style linking starting from main. So, if you load complete packages, then it's really like even if you have improved caching, if you load packages from CDN and uh, or you share a package uh, JavaScript code uh, between programs, uh, that your end result is still slower, uh, less optimal than the split objects like uh, uh, the thing. Let's see how we do for the time. Okay. Um, so, and, and doing it with JavaScript uh, um, uh, module systems uh, and uh, increasing granularity or decreasing, uh, at least making it smaller, um, that generates so many modules, like tens of thousands of hundreds of thousands or hundreds of thousands. That's not really something that uh, the JS module systems have been uh, designed for. So, there was a bit of an effort to uh, write the JS system fast enough for this. And, uh, general uh, JavaScript uh, module loading thing uh, doesn't really scale. So for now, uh, using JavaScript modules uh, for any uh, specific granularity seems not really feasible. Uh, but some things that are feasible um, are something that I've implemented uh, some time ago, the duplication and uh, output uh, in out.js, the compiled Haskell code, um, is fairly repetitive and often oh, uh, often uh, you have exactly the same functions with different names in multiple places, sometimes even fairly big things since you have specialization in mining uh, in multiple places, something gets mined and specialized uh, uh, because uh, the module that needs specialization doesn't see that there's already another specialization somewhere. Um, so dedupe is um, a fairly simple uh, approach. Uh, the JCDS from all the object files knows the metadata uh, and all the code uh, in um, all the generated JavaScript code and it can compute recursively uh, whether something is identical uh, just by computing fingerprints. Uh, and if, uh, for example, you have function A uh, and A references B um, and you also have function Y, uh, X and the references Y and B and Y Hash to the same fingerprints, uh, then we unify them, um, and then um, we continue computing uh, fingerprints for things that depend on those. Uh, if A and uh, X, uh, after uh, unifying those uh, dependencies, uh, have the same code, then everything can be uh, one of those pairs can be removed. That's more or less uh, the um, algorithm. Um, so if you pass the DDU like it does this, and for larger programs it often drops about 50% of the size of the code because there's so much duplication in there. There, there may be more room for more improvement. Um, it's mostly just choosing a single canonical representative for each of these uh, uh, um, instances, and, but it does a bit of reorganization to uh, make more, uh, 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 have more uh, uh, opportunities for uh, removing some codes. Um, and the other thing that's already been there for a while is incremental linking. Um, instead of a single auto.js file uh, 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 or all the JS file for an app, the idea is that you generate a, a base, something that you link against. You assume that that's already been loaded. Um, and if you uh, link your program um, and use uh, uh, and point to the existing base, then all, all the code that's already uh, in there will not be included in your all.js, which goes for both uh, 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 out.js, the compiled Haskell code, uh, and the uh, uh, dependencies in, in the .js. Uh, but this was rather inconvenient to use. So the main thing that uh, I've been working on recently, and that should be uh, in the JCDS tree soon, 
I was hoping to finish before the talk, but unfortunately I didn't. Um, that's something that combines the two options and that makes things, I think, uh, more flexible and more usable in uh, 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 real systems rather than requiring that your base uh, uh, bundle is uh, uh, generated before you link your program. GHDS now stores uh, all the required metadata to change how your program is linked uh, inside the JSX directory. So what you can do uh, is um, first uh, link your program statically, uh, either JSX and either JSX. Uh, you generate an incremental uh, uh, um, bundle uh, Common.jsx uh, currently only uh, the intersection of A and B or all the inputs is, is uh, used, uh, but it's fairly easy to change how whatever symbols it will uh, include in there. Um, but um, after that, uh, after compiling A and B, uh, you generate common, and after you uh, have Common.jsx, you can relink uh, both A and B to use uh, Common.jsx and um, then. Uh, you change your index or your HTML file to load the common files first and then the files for the specific application. So those will get cached uh, in the browser um, quickly. Um, and um, something that's uh, new uh, other than how it's used is that all symbols are fingerprinted, which opens up some other use cases. Uh, some other variations, if you have a common uh, JavaScript uh, uh, file, uh, you can uh, generate your incremental bundle uh, pointing to an existing uh, common file. Uh, so now I need to load, uh, now I generate my common 2.jsx, uh, assuming that common 1.jsx has been loaded before uh, from my a.jsx and b.jsx. Uh, and then I can uh, uh, have uh, more Incremental uh, uh, load size. Maybe my front end is simpler uh, and I uh, only use common one there, but my back end is multiple pages or something. And uh, there's some uh, uh, common shared uh, uh, code that's loaded in many places. So maybe I want a second uh, one there. Uh, so you just do that by uh, uh, generating uh, a new uh, bundle pointing to the existing one. And the other thing that's made possible by fingerprinting is that if you have an old version of your app already deployed, um, you can relink your new version against the old version. JHC and JHCS don't really uh, guarantee any binary compatibility between multiple versions. You might upgrade, say, uh, the package, uh, and um, maybe something in minor will change, maybe uh, uh, lots of code will change. Uh, but since everything is fingerprinted and everything is available, you're statically linked, uh, executable, uh, the compiler will just see whatever is still usable from the original file, it will produce the new file uh, with everything that it needs to go there. It might be a little bit bigger than you might hope for, since you can see much has changed more. Uh, but uh, the guarantee is that it will still work. So that's basically the, the main uh, improvement in um, the, the linker that I've been uh, working on recently. Um, and there's one other new feature that's uh, still in progress, that's uh, delayed loading. Um, if I have a big application, um, uh, and it's a single application with the main starting point, but maybe uh, uh, my first um, page is a login page that's fairly simple, and then I can click through to various uh, backend administration pages that need to load way more. Um, then uh, delayed loading is something that splits up the JavaScript file into multiple smaller files, and the idea is that uh, even if you have a single program, if you use a um, more restricted uh, way of referencing things from uh, separate modules, those modules won't, won't be loaded immediately, they will be loaded on demand when uh, they're dereferenced. So the current implementation that I'm working with is something where you have a module uh, um, that exports some function, uh, some function calls the load delay template Haskell, which um, um, uh, is implemented as something that uses uh, static pointers internally. Uh, and if you pass uh, the enable delay flag for some module, then all the things that were constructed through this way uh, and are not referenced directly from main. So the linker still um, uh, traces all the dependencies directly reachable from the main action. That's the, the program that it loads uh, at startup. Uh, but all the um, uh, uh, all the data or all the functions referenced through this uh, load delayed 
mechanism are loaded on demand when they're actually uh, called. So these block uh, the thread until the JavaScript code is actually available, um, and then the code is started. And the main advantage here is that this skips or saves you the parsing and metadata initialization overhead of all the code that you uh, don't need uh, yet. So this should improve responsiveness to this loading uh, on initial loads. Um, and I can imagine other things like having a front end and back end application as a single large web application where you start with just loading the front end and you load uh, the, the, the back end uh, uh, when uh, needed. Uh, this, uh, this, this is also close to done, but not quite. So this, this should end up in uh, GHCS soon. Um, and that's more or less the features that I wanted to discuss. Uh, so uh, I hope I gave a reasonable overview of what's in there, uh, how the code is bundled. Uh, the mechanisms are fairly primitive for external JavaScript. We have JS sources with C preprocessor uh, and the, uh, everything that's concatenated in the global scope. Um, and uh, we have linking with currently uh, uh, incremental linking, but uh, and soon lazy loading and improved incremental linking. Uh, but my question mostly is uh, if anyone has any ideas on how to deal with more real world problems, like I have uh, an actual deployment uh, thing where I want to uh, uh, have yeah, some specific uh, things I want to distribute my, say, compiled Haskell library with. Um, um, an NPM package and load it into the Atom editor or uh, distribute this part of something. How do we avoid needing to um, uh, bundle RTS.js everywhere? Uh, how do we keep the code size manageable? And if we uh, depend uh, in our Haskell code on something from an NPM package, uh, if you use JavaScript directly, um, often tools like Browserify or Webpack, uh, I think. Uh, are used. These are rather uh, non-deterministic, um, and um, I don't really have a good uh, answer yet uh, of how we should deal with them. I think we sh should uh, aim for making uh, things work. Like this is something. Uh, I have to go back to the. This is something that I'd like to keep working. Like, uh, um, if uh, there's JavaScript code needed for uh, your uh, program to run and we can load it in Node.js or something, it should really be there. I don't want, uh, ideally, uh, to have JS the linker make requests to some public NPM repo or something. But still, um, if that means bundling way more uh, uh, NPM code with your Haskell packages, then ideal for uh, web deployment. Then there should be a way to recompute, for example, uh, uh, some some bundle of JS so to uh, once, uh, and other things that are like scoping. Everything in global scope is a bit limited. It's easy, but uh, easy to implement. Uh, but maybe we should have some conventions, like uh, if a certain uh, Haskell package, command package, uh, uses certain names to make flash with other uh, names from other packages. Uh, that, that's not particularly safe. So, uh, if anyone has any ideas, please come to me later. Or uh, if anyone has any questions uh, on why I don't do things a certain thing or suggestions, please ask. Thank you. Right, it's a hard problem, I think. So, <laughs> that's why I haven't really come up with a proper solution. Uh, so, later is fine too. Uh, then, um, any other questions? Uh, the thrust of this, uh, aside from the complexity, is it to um, cut down on load time for applications? Um, well, that's part of it. I mean, um, the split object style linking, uh, so not loading a single JavaScript file for each package, that saves down, uh, saves a lot of code science. Um, and because it's so optimal to start with loading complete libraries, like if you load the full text package, then you also need to load all, uh, all the dependencies of, of that. And uh, every extra thing you include may uh, uh, just um, cause a chain reaction of more dependencies. Uh, so that's the reason uh, the linker really starts uh, uh, and works on a perfection. 
uh, that will say that's the reason for out.js. Uh, .js. For lib.js, uh, my personal goal is really that I like the compiler to produce something uh, immediately usable. Uh, we have the uh, real world uh, uh, situation of NPM packages or other ways of distributing JavaScript libraries. There's a very simple mechanism with Cabal now, uh, including JavaScript sources. And I hope that with some simple tools, we can find a workable way of bundling JavaScript codes with packages so that they work immediately, so that you can trust them directly. Uh, but something that is not necessarily immediately optimal. Uh, but if, if it's not optimal, then there should be a way to write your own scripts around it. Uh, another example that I think uh, is the new features. Uh, where did I go? So the new reading uh, feature. So the, the old, uh, yes. So the old way of uh, um, uh, linking an incremental thing is first linking something. Um, um, like having a module that has the things that you want to include as dependencies. And that has to exist before you uh, link your final program. So in your Cabal, uh, uh, GHCDS options, you have to point to that thing that has to exist some, somewhere. That's not ideal in, um, in the build system. So I changed this to um, uh, just use straightforward statically linked builds and um, uh, have something that can run after the fact, a simple script. You don't need uh, to, to know the locations of package databases or anything. JGDS can compute a safe uh, um, new result, uh, mostly regardless of what you throw at it. Even older versions, as long as they've been built with the same JGDS, package dependencies are different, uh, different versions, uh, they should still uh, work. Uh, so, yes, it's, it's mostly. Uh, the goal is uh, how to make it work immediately uh, um, uh, from the command line, something uh, straightforward out of the box, and how can we make it easy, easily, uh, efficiently deployable from there, dealing with whatever existing dependencies and libraries we have to work on. Yes? Yes. You mentioned in the past, I uh, hope not, I'm not putting you on the spot, but I was excited about this, a next generation code generator named, is it here? Yes, that's I'm wondering true. if that's something you're still working on or something that didn't work out? Um, well, the main reason that um, uh, I haven't been working on that for uh, the past weeks is that I was working on this. Okay. Uh, this got a bit bigger since uh, I wanted to address some um, performance issues with the linker as well and uh, make the code a bit uh, uh, cleaner. Here is uh, uh, still uh, in progress. Um, one new thing that I hope to add is um, at least enough type information for eventually uh, uh, outputting WebAssembly uh, from there. That's a bit of a longer term uh, project still since uh, WebAssembly is now new in all browsers. I'm not sure if the stable versions have the initial WebAssembly um, enabled all, but otherwise it's in the next Firefox and Chrome update. Um, and Internet Explorer or Edge uh, also has it in Safari, I think, somewhat further away in the future, but JavaScript Core is the fastest JS engine for uh, a JHCDS source, so they need it least. Uh, so yes, it's still uh, planned, and, um, um, but yeah, it's a lot of work, and this is something uh, uh, that was a bit shorter to me. And WebAssembly is really uh, a new uh, thing. I joined the W3 uh, community group uh, to discuss things, but at the moment we can work with the initial uh, WebAssembly version. We don't have tail calls. Uh, I think uh, tail calls will help performance, but they're not uh, necessary. We can, we can live without them. Um, and we, uh, I think with WebAssembly we have to. Uh, uh, you live a bit in this bit world, you don't have direct access to managed uh, JavaScript even. Uh, but I think the design decisions with GCDS so far uh, don't uh, uh, actually are uh, uh, quite uh, uh, reasonable for that. It's really just uh, as well, uh, GCDS can produce the blue code. I think the, uh, the goal is mostly to keep the 
code working the same uh, and JavaScript Edify instead of uh, inserting JavaScript directly into the Haskell code, uh, which generates some blue code calls. But I think that uh, as far as I can see now, the initial version should uh, be usable uh, with minimal code change. But performance characteristics can be different. Uh, calls, uh, uh, call overhead to JavaScript will be a bit more, but started time will be a lot less. Like, uh, uh, um, uh, contrary to JavaScript, uh, WebAssembly does have top level data, so we can just load all the top level Haskell objects, everything that we need uh, as, as WebAssembly data, and we uh, uh, can avoid that metadata step. We can also improve it in JavaScript, and that's something that has been uh, uh, something that I want to do for a while, but it's easier after I have the data changes uh, uh, finished. Um, but uh, overall, I think we can get an order of magnitude faster started time with uh, 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 and, uh So I think, yeah, uh, now with, uh, uh, with SM.js, people have asked me, should you get supported? Uh, it's approximately the same amount of work to support SM.js as uh, uh, WebAssembly, since you need to redo the uh, uh, layout of all the Haskell values in memory, you need to port JSC storage manager. Uh, perhaps uh, uh, WebAssembly in the future will get some uh, uh, managed memory support, but initially we can't really count on that and we don't even know if it's going to be suitable for kids' uh, um, expectations. Uh, so overall, the amount of code that we need to report is similar, but now for WebAssembly there's a single standard, I think now is the time to, to actually do it, especially since there are actual service users. Yeah. That's how any more? All right, then I'd like to thank you for your attention. And please come to me if you have any ideas, uh, even if you have no idea, uh, it might work out. I'm happy to discuss since this uh, bundling of uh, working with JavaScript dependencies or distributing uh, parts of Haskell applications or Haskell libraries is something that I'd like to solve. So if you have a use case, uh, whatever. Just uh, mention it and I'll see if I can do this.